All right, guys, today's lesson is going to be a little bit different than some of the videos that I've had to do in the past because the, some of the activities that we're going to do in class, I can't read with you guys. Uh, but the first activity that I'm going to have the kids do is I'm going to have them draw out this triangle to scale using a ruler. So if you have a ruler with you and you are able to do this, you can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw this triangle. So I want to have a side that is five centimeters long. Let me zoom back out here. So, I'm going to start by drawing a side length that is 5 centimeters long. So, here is 5. And then I'm going to draw my other side so that this one is a right angle and it's going to be 12 centimeters long. Okay, so this one is 5 centimeters, this one is 12 centimeters. And this is a right angle. So what I am interested in is how I'm going to connect these two real quick. What I am interested in is exactly how long this other side is. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure it. And I don't know if you can tell on this ruler, but from the start to the finish would be right here. So this is 13 centimeters. Okay, so that's the first thing. Keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Okay, um, <clears throat> the next thing in class that we're going to do is a kind of like a little bit of a puzzle. Well, it's going to be hard for you guys to do. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what is what I'm calling the numerical method for finding um, this side up here. Okay, so I'm going to say for finding the third side of a triangle because we know the first two sides and we want to know how long the other side would be. Now obviously if you have the triangle drawn to scale like we did here you could just measure it but that's not always going to be the case okay so what you actually do is you take the first side all right you take the first side which is five and you times it by itself five times five is 25 you take the other side 12 and you times it by itself that would be 144. And then you add the two sides together, which would give you 169. And then the final step is to just take the square root of this number, and that would give you 13 for your third side, which is what we got when we measured it out. Okay? So this might look a little bit complicated, but it's really not. Okay? You're going to multiply this side by itself, 5 times 5. You're going to multiply this side by itself, 12 times 12. Add your two numbers together, square root it. Okay, so I'm going to, let, I'm going to write this out. Um, you're going to multiply 5 times 5. You're going to multiply 12 times 12. You're going to add those together. And last thing is square root. And that and remember, we talked about square rooting yesterday. Square root. Okay, so this right here, that's our numerical method. So we should be able to take just about any triangle that looks like this one. Okay, if we have these two sides, we should be able to find the third side by doing this method. Okay, so that leads me to um, a golf problem that I have. So, let's say this right here is my uh, golf course. I don't really know much about golf, but here's right here is where they uh, tell you to tee off. And you got to get the ball from here into the hole. And obviously, if you know anything about golf, the idea is to get it from where you tee off into the hole in as few hits as you can. Okay? So now they've shown us on this map that most people would hit it from here to here which is about 165 yards and then hopefully somewhere the ball would land over here somewhere and then hit from here to here which is about 220 yards now the idea behind golf is that the better you are at golf the fewer hits it takes okay so this right here would be considered a maybe a par if you know anything about golf, they would say par 
two. And what that means is you can hit it from here to here in two hits. Or maybe they might they might even say, okay, this one would probably take them two hits to get it here, and then another two hits here, so that would maybe be called par four. Okay, the idea is if you can get it from starting point to the ending point in as few hits as possible, that's how you get a good score in golf. Now, the best thing to do, instead of to hit it from here to here, excuse me, from here to here and then here to here, is to take a more direct approach. And I think any of us could probably tell that. So the best thing to do would be to hit it just straight from here to here. And then that's where our uh, numerical method is that, we, uh, that it comes into play. If we could figure out how far it is from here to here, it should save us a little bit of time. Or excuse me, a little bit of yards, I guess. So, instead of hitting from here to here to here, the more direct route is just right there. Well, if you'll notice, this is a right triangle. And if I relate it to this method, this one that I just used up here, these are very similar, okay? So, we're going to use our numerical method here to solve this problem. So, remember, your method is you multiply the... The, multiply this one by itself, multiply this one by itself, add them together, and then square root. So in my golf problem, we're going to multiply this by itself, multiply this by itself, add them together, and then square root. So for my golf problem, here we go. What we want to do is we want to do 165 times itself. Let's see what I got for that. And if you remember, 165 times 165 is the same thing as 165 squared. And I get this big number right there, 27,225. Okay, and then we want to do 220 yards times itself. 220 times itself. You could do 220 times 220 or you can do squared, but that gives you 48,400. Add them together. And we get 75,625. Okay, and then the, after you add those together, you want a square root. So that's our last step. Voila, that's my answer. So what that means for my golf problem, if I had a ruler, now imagine the size of the ruler to measure from here to here. If this is 165 yards, a ruler's not going to do it, okay? But if you had some kind of measuring device, you could measure from here to here. But using our numerical method, we shorten it up a little bit. We shorten up our effort, and we know from here to here, directly across, would be 275 yards. Now, obviously, that's the quickest way to do it. Instead of going here and then another direction there, quickest way is to go straight across. Okay, so that leads me to the rest of our lesson today, which is about finding the third side in a triangle. Okay, now that actually is called the hypotenuse. Okay, so there's a new vocabulary word for us. In a triangle like any of these, this side that is across from the angle, the right angle, is called the hypotenuse. Okay, on this triangle, this one would be my hypotenuse. On this triangle, this one would be my hypotenuse. Okay, so today we are talking about finding the hypotenuse. And we're going to use our numerical method, okay? And this should be pretty easy for us. It's the same steps over and over again. I'm going to go over them one more time. You multiply a number by itself, multiply the other number by itself, add those together, square root. So we're going to try a couple examples here. Now, this side right here would be my hypotenuse. That's the side we want to find. So we're going to do 9 times 9, which is 81, 12 times 12, 
which is 144. We're going to add those together. Let's see what 81 plus 144 is 225. And then finally, square root. The square root of 225. And that gives us 15. So that means this side up here would be 15. Okay, for this one, we're going to do, it doesn't matter which one of these you start with, we're going to do 15 times 15, which is 225. We're going to do 8 times 8, which is 64. We're going to add those together, which gives me 289, and finally, square root it. Which, remember we talked about this yesterday. I don't expect you to know the square root of 289, so use that calculator to help you. And we get 17, so that means this third, this side over here, this third side, the hypotenuse, is 17. All right, example three, here we go, doing it again. This is the side we're looking for. We're going to do 10 times 10, which is 100. And then we're going to do 6 times 6, which is 36. Add them together. I get 136. And last step, square root 136. Uh-huh. This time we get a decimal number. And remember, we talked about that yesterday as well. N not every number is a perfect square. So sometimes, a lot of times actually, you're going to get a decimal number like this. So let's keep rounding it to two decimal places. Right here, the 6. Because this is a 1, that is less than 4. This is going to stay the same. So this is approximately 11.66, which means this side is approximately 11.66. Okay, one more. Again, I, this is a pretty easy process. As long as you follow the steps of our numerical method, you should be okay. So we're going to take these two sides, 12 times 12, and that is 144. 18 times 18, I do not know what that is. That's 324. Add them together. We get 468. And the last thing is to square root it. And here's what I got. So we're going to take the 3, and it stays the same. So this is 21.63. And y'all, that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, again, this is called finding the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side that is always across from the right angle. Okay, right now, that's all we're looking at is finding the hypotenuse using this numerical method. Okay. Um, so what I have for you guys to do is a Kahoot, um, and it is just practicing this numerical method right here. Okay? If you all have any questions, you all know to let me know. Tomorrow we're going to extend on this, but this is it. This is the foundation for this.